Hello, my name is Grant Yocum. I'll be your instructor for Introduction to Ethics, uh, Oakland University, Phil 3, 1300, Section 70 and 80, Winter 2020, it's hard to believe. Uh, this is going to be a series of brief videos um, that go over the course syllabus um, for this class and talk about um, it, just sort of a course overview, course policies, the assignments, and the grading criteria. I've set this so that um, in order to access the rest of the course, you have to screen both this video and um, open the syllabus file. Um, in the past, I've had problems with uh, students reaching the end of the semester and not having done so. Right? So um, it, it, now this way, I know that you have at least looked, at least glanced at this course syllabus. So, um, in this course, uh, well, it's, as you know, it's part of your um, gen ed requirement uh, for the, the knowledge civilization, uh, the exploration, uh, whatever, whatever. Um, so, uh, the massive part of, um, of, of the first page of the syllabus is just boilerplate. Um, there are a couple of uh, important the aspects of this first part here. Um, I'll just read the course catalog description. It's a major ethical analysis of right, wrong, good, and evil from the ancient Greeks to the present. Appeals to custom, theology, happiness, reason, human nature will be examined offering via, as offering viable criteria. For uh, judgment on contemporary issues of moral concern offered every semester, it satisfies the gen ed requirement in the Western civilization knowledge exploration area. So um, th that's, that's the overview of the course. Now, um, under the mandated um, course uh, objectives, you'll notice um, that the last few are quite important and I take them quite seriously in the context here. Um, to develop uh, students' facility in reading and analyzing theories learned in class, to develop students' facility in writing creatively and clearly about ethical questions, and to help students um, learn how to apply ethical theory to concrete situations. So um, it, the important bit there is this has to be a writing course. Um, so as part of this course, you're going to um, be writing a series of uh, three essays. Right, um, it, it's sort of two to three page sort of analyses. So um, that's where we're, we're, we're going to do that. Um, basically what I want you to be able to take away from this course is to understand the basic structure of an argument, assess um, philosophical arguments, and clearly and effectively communicate about and create, critique these ideas and arguments in writing. Right, constructing your own arguments, right? So um, ideally, uh, the way that this course lays itself out is um, it's not my job to teach you the difference between right and wrong. I don't know who would be able to do that without being a dogmatist. Um, it, this course aims to help you think about how to consider the distinction between right and wrong and to critically evaluate um, the basis of should claims. You should do this, you should not do that. Throughout the entirety of your life, people are going to be telling you, uh, you should do this, or you shouldn't do that, right? Or phrasing it even more strongly as you have to do this, you must do that, right? Um, really, as free individuals, and um, it's important for us to be able to critically assess this. If somebody says you should do that, your response as a free reasoning being with agency right, ought to be, well, show me your reasons. Right? On what basis are you making that claim? So this course is um, going to offer a good deal of um, tools and practice uh, with regard to that. 
So um, just a few quick things about myself here. Um, like I say, my name's Grant Yoakum. If you're feeling fancy, it's doctor. Um, I often don't feel fancy. It's amazing. You work so hard to get the thing and then you don't want to talk about it. Um, it's I'm Canadian, right? So I've got two undergraduate degrees from the University of Windsor. Um, so it's I'm actually sitting in an office in Canada right now. Um, and uh, they are an honors in philosophy and a BA in uh, English lit theory, that sort of thing. Uh, I went on to a university by the name of Brock University to do my master's and my PhD. Uh, my master's in philosophy um, was uh, focused on comparative philosophy between Eastern philosophy, so Buddhism, Taoism, Confucian philosophy, some Hindu, um, etc., right, and Western continental philosophy. Uh, when I did the PhD, I did an interdisciplinary PhD um, with a focus on social theory, um, social practice, critique of social transformation, and ethics that examine deindustrializing cities right? and um, activist practice. So um, that is uh, my background there. Um, it's I also have twin four-year-old girls um, that keeps me quite busy um, and uh, one with a rare genetic disorder and a whole bunch of health problems. So Oakland University has been good enough to allow me to teach online to keep me a little bit flexible in order to um, manage not only an international commute but on top of that um, a more complicated than normal uh, family situation. Uh, I should tell you right off the bat um, that uh, my, my daughter Abigail is uh, this semester looking at a heart surgery. I should be able to stay on top of the course um, from bedside basically, um, but there may be some brief interruptions in communication that I will work my darndest uh, to, to minimize um, throughout the semester. Um, if you get the impression that I'm not responding to your emails or anything along those lines, um, that's partially because there are a lot of you and there's only one of me. Um, uh, and the a lot of you have basically one way to communicate with me via email. I get behind. I get behind and I am juggling quite a bit. Um, so uh, if you do not receive um, a timely response to your first email, I'm not perfect. I may have missed it. Right? Uh, so I invite you to send me a second email. Now this is important because right at the top um, I'm doing office hours by appointment and um, I stipulate you should contact me via email. Uh, which is uh, yokum at oakland.edu um, with any course concerns or difficulties. Uh, it's best to talk to me before there's a problem rather than to wait until the problem has become a problem. So um, that is the deal there. Um, Moodle is going to be your hotspot for the course, so um, make sure you're logged into Moodle and you must have because you found this video. Um, and uh, basically what we're going to do um, is a survey of um, the history of moral philosophy and by survey I mean we're really spot checking um, over 2,000 years of theory. Now um, I've asked you to buy a lot of books. Right? The first one that we will be engaging with is Plato's Five Dialogues. Um, we're taking a look at two of the dialogues, and this is a Hackett translation. Um, the company Hackett actually has old translations that they as cheaply as possible print, and um, they, they, they try to make them very affordable for students. So I try to be conscious of that when I'm ordering books, um, as compared to uh, some of the readers out there that are exorbitant, have color photos, and that sort of thing. It's, uh, you know, really what we want is the arguments. So. Uh, we'll just be taking a look at two of these dialogues, the Apology and the Credo, in the context of this course. So um, that'll be your first textbook. Um, and believe it or not, yes, I, I do want you to buy all of the books. Uh, you have the option to rent them as well. Oh, where did my copy of Kant's Grounding to Metaphysics and Morals go? 
Oh, missing. Oh, well, um, I'll find it. <laughs> it's in a pile somewhere. Um, uh, the second book will be uh, Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, um, who was a student of Plato's. Um, and there are 10 books in uh, the Nicomachean Ethics. We'll just be taking look, a look at um, two of the books in some detail and uh, the first section of the third book. So um, it, you can see I'm trying to keep your reading down to um, sort of a minimum. Um, it, the third book, which I've just noticed is probably buried in a pile somewhere here, um, is Kant's Groundwork to the Metaphysic of Morals. Um, this is probably the most difficult book uh, that you will be um, engaging with this semester. But, oh, is that it? Yep, there it is, aha. Uh -huh. Right, um, Kant's Grounding to the Metaphysic of Morals. It's also the shortest book right, in the course. Um, it, you know, it's but it's dense. So uh, what we will be taking a look at here is the preface and first two sections um, of this book. Right, so I'll give you an overview on what the theory is too, in just one second. Um, from Kant, uh, we move on to John Stuart Mill. I'm having you buy two books here, and um, I'm testing you on both of them: uh, utilitarianism and uh, on liberty. Right. Um, we'd have to do a lot of reading in utilitarianism just to get what's in the first section of On Liberty. Uh, I think Mill does a better job of explaining what he's up to in On Liberty anyhow. So, um, so uh, these will be uh, the, the two books for John Stuart Mill. Um, we're just taking a look at um, what the introduction and parts one and two of utilitarianism and the first section of On Liberty. Then it's time for something completely different. Uh, we turn to a one Mr. Uh, Frederick Nietzsche and his Beyond Good and Evil. We'll just be taking a look at the preface in the first two sections there. Um, it's an interesting argument um, that uh, offers a really fundamental critique of Western philosophical attempts to establish um, an ethic. And then finally, um, uh, we turn to Jean-Paul Sartre and his Existentialism in Human Emotions. This is the one book you might have some trouble getting. Um, I've sat down with my scanner and actually scanned it. So um, you'll have um, a PDF of that available for you uh, as well. It's out of print. Um, but uh, if you go to aidbooks.com, I think I paid $3 for this copy, free shipping within the United States. So um, it's not hard to actually get a copy of this. Um, I, I like this argument and I like concluding with this argument because it puts the focus right back on freedom. So, um, like I say, without an emphatic no, no, uh, notion of freedom, uh, the subject of ethics, the subject of right and wrong, the subject of responsibility, and the subject of a should claim, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, make no sense. Right? It all starts from the assumption that we are free and in some sense able to choose and be responsible for those choices. So right off the bat, um, what we are going to do is engage with Socrates um, and sort of indirectly his account of freedom within the context of the Athenian democracy. He's going to lay out right, some preconditions for democracy and an argument in favor of it, right? And present us with a certain account of justice as well. So um, that will get the ball rolling for our course. And I really like this argument, right? Um, it's, it, there's, there's, there's a reason why every philosopher um, that came after Socrates was just called a pre-Socratic philosopher, because really the most emphatic sort of notion of justice, right, and the most devout sort of disposition to truth um, we find in Socrates, right? So we're starting with the ancient Greeks, right? Then um, we move to Aristotle and his Nicomachean Ethics. Um, this is basically uh, the Swiss Army book, right? Um, it's one part hard philosophy. It's based on a metaphysics, right? 
Uh, it's one part ethical theory, as the title suggests. It's one part self-help book, right? It might be the first Western self-help book ever written because it aims at producing um, a condition of flourishing or a happy life, right? Um, it's one part child-rearing manual as well because it goes on about habituation and um, teaching and instilling virtue even from a young age. So um, this is one of the more important books in the history of Western ethical theory at any rate, right? So that will be the ancient part of the course. Um, there are three sections, ancient, modern, and postmodern, right? Uh, then we turn to uh, the moderns, right? And there is a tension between Kant, who we'll turn to first, and John Stuart Mill, who will follow. There's something interesting that happens in um, modern philosophy. Whereas um, the ancients were concerned with virtue and dispositions and habits and um, it basically the condition of one's character, oddly the moderns turn to an evaluation of discrete and particular actions. Right? So this will start sounding more like the ethical theory that you want to apply in your day-to-day -day life. It's probably more like what you're expecting from this course. So Kant and Mill will come up with and present us with systems for making moral decisions, issue by issue, decision by decision, choice by choice, right? Um, that said, they couldn't be more different, right? The key word for Kant is duty, right? Um, and he does not actually evaluate the outcome of your action. The outcome of your action has no moral worth for Kant. It's basically that we have to be acting on the basis of principles that are sound and moral. You're doing the right thing for the right reason. Does it work out? Not important. If you've done the right thing for the right reason, you've done your duty. Right? Um, he also doesn't care whether you want to or not. If you're doing the right thing for the right reason, the right reason doesn't emanate from your preference. Right? So, so that'll be the Kantian account of Dewey. Right? John Stuart Mill, on the other hand, is going to evaluate only the outcome of an action in terms of um, satisfaction, that is, the, an abundance of pleasure outweighing pain. Right, um, so this is this is the idea of the principle of utility, right? Um, that we'll engage with. Now, um, how I present Kant and Mill, it's sort of interesting the immigration debate that's going on right now, which asks, do people have human rights? I mean, as humans, or do rights stem from some sort of political state? If, you know, you want to argue that human beings as human, qua human, right, have rights and value, can't your guy, right? Whereas, if you want to analyze the notion of rights from, stemming from a political sort of situation, John Stuart Mill, because what he's talking about, especially in his on liberty, is civic and social liberty, right? This is where your rights come from. They come from the nation state, basically, right? So um, whether or not immigrants, or more importantly, stateless people have rights, is something um, that Kant would have a simple direct answer for. And John Stuart Mill would muddy, right? So um, hopefully we'll be able to get into that debate a little bit um, through this course as well, right? Then we move to the postmoderns, right? And what the postmoderns noticed is that the systematic approach to ethics is a little on the dicey side, right? Um, the ethical systems have a tendency to, one, generalize, right? And two, right, um, treat all contexts as though they are the same, right? Um, and, uh, you know, largely the critique of these systematic approaches to ethics comes out quite clearly 
in Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, right? He's also going to unmask a number of assumptions at the heart of Western uh, Western philosophical accounts of ethics as well, but related to the notions of good and evil as dyad oppositions, right? Um, he's going to push past and actually offer um, some sort of a positive account that doesn't rely on the opposition of good and evil, but rather, right, um, something else, right? Uh, you, you, an emphatic notion of freedom has agency. Right, and picking up from there, then we will turn to Jean Paul Sartre, the existentialist master, uh, who turned down the Nobel Prize in Literature for his nausea. Right, that's that's sort of interesting, and um, this will be an, an existential ethics based on almost nothing but the notion of freedom, right, and the, the corresponding responsibility that goes along with it. Um, what's interesting about Sartre is he actually talks about emotion too, right? We're going to start with Socrates, who's going to drive a hard distinction between reason and emotions, right? Uh, whereas Jean-Paul Sartre, when we conclude, will actually point out that, um, you know, if we're going to analyze an ethical situation, we have to engage with the emotions, right? So hopefully this is going to be an interesting course. Um, the course itself is going to be broken down into uh, three modes of assessment. Um, there are going to be uh, essay assignments, three of them were 20% of your final grade each uh, for a total of 60%. Um, it, we're going to have Moodle quizzes, six in total, worth five points each uh, for a total of 30% of your grade and um, discussion forums for another 10% of your grade there. So um, that, uh, that is going to be um, the, 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 the basic structure of the course and more or less what you can expect um, this semester. In the next video, um, I'm going to talk about um, course policies and evaluation. Uh, followed by um, a brief video that talks about um, a, a, a grading, right? So uh, hopefully um, it, this won't be too trying for you um, and uh, you'll be able to um, follow along and get a good idea. If there's anything that I'm not answering in these videos or on the syllabus, please again email me at yokum.oakland.edu. Uh, uh, Oakland right. Thank you.